Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Relax. Look, it's already started. Hey, I'm CK from CK's Kitchen Channel, but this is not my kitchen. This is 1980s Canasi, Brooklyn, where I grew up. And this here is Bruno's Italian Restaurant. Let me tell you something. I grew up, to be specific, in Bruno's Italian Restaurant. Bruno's was owned by my best friend's parents. My best friend growing up was a guy named Zipperhead Pizza Man. That's a weird name. I'll grant you that. Zipperhead Pizza Man's a weird name, but that was Zipperhead Pizza Man's name. What can I do? His parents were what would you call these days multicultural, right? Uh, back then, we would just call them Jutalians. You see, uh, his mother was a nice Jewish girl from Brooklyn. His father was a tough Italian guy from Sicily. Um, brilliant guy. He is fluent in, in Italian, of course, in French, in Spanish, and he can barely speak English his entire life. And when I say his entire life, I mean he just passed away a couple of weeks ago. And um, his wife preceded him um, by a little bit. They, they were together in a lifetime, a lifetime of food and cursing. And I want to recreate one of the dishes. I've been talking to Pizza Man, right? And I've been talking to Little Leo, my brother. I said, Little Leo, um, remember we used to love the Italian knish at Bruno's. I want to recreate that because nobody else knows how to make that. So I talked to Pizza Man, I talked to Little Leo, and we're figuring how can we do it in a home kitchen. And I'm going to make an attempt to do the Italian knish. It will remind you of a stromboli if you are familiar with stromboli. It will remind you of a sausage roll if you are familiar with sausage roll. But it is neither. It is cousin to both. It is the joining of the Jewish and the Italian, the Italian knish. Meaning it's Italian food with a Jewish name. Now let me take you into the ingredients of the Italian knish. Italian knish is a pretty simple dish. It's made with pizza dough, it's made with a little olive oil, some sweet Italian sausage, sometimes called mild Italian sausage, depending on where you are and if you're not buying it from a real Italian place, but it's, it's sweet Italian sausage. Uh, mozzarella cheese, I got some uh, fresh mozzarella cheese. I got it pre-sliced because I don't want to grate my fingers off, so I bought sliced from the um, deli counter, but it's mozzarella cheese, trust me. Um, and then the Italian flag itself, green, white, and red, green peppers and red peppers, white onion. These simple ingredients that come together to make the most amazing dish you will have never had. Sorry about that. Um, so let's get cooking, shall we? So what we got to do is we got to cook up some of our food because um, we're going to bake this, but it probably wouldn't bake hot enough, long enough that the dough is going to be cooked before the vegetables and the meat would be. So we're going to pre-cook the innards of the Italian knish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up um, these uh, peppers and this onion into pretty big pieces. Um, and then I'm going to take them over to a cast iron pan. I'm going to cook it in the cast iron pan. I'm going to cook the sausage in the cast iron pan. And then I'm actually going to cook the Italian knishes in the oven at about... I don't know, 475 in the cast iron pan. So the oil with all those flavors is soaking into the Italian knish and the hot uh, bottom of the pan will crust up the pizza uh, dough in a way that you just can't do in a regular oven without taking extra precautions. But though, you know, regular pizza ovens have the heat transfer, the specific heat is different and it cooks at a better temperature. You know what I mean? So I, I can't, I'm going to do that on a simulation mat with a cast iron pan. So here we go. I'm going to chop things up. Okay, so I got my vegetables chopped up, right? They're not chopped up finely. They're not diced. They're just cut into you know, nice, nice strips, you know? Nice big pieces of vegetables. So you really know you're eating your vegetables, right? Speak of eating your vegetables. Vincenzo does not believe in eating your vegetables. It is a sincerely held belief of his that he eats things that eat vegetables. That's what he eats. And he'll eat cheese because it comes out of a thing that eats vegetables. He's like a second generation vegetarian, you know what I mean? So what we do is we got four pieces of dough, we're gonna move our four sausages, we're gonna make four Italian knishes, and Vincenzo won't have vegetables. Hey, and you say, oh, he's not gonna grow big and strong. He's six feet tall, he's six feet tall. He doesn't eat vegetables, they, they are, that's a lie. So, um, okay, so we're moving on to the cast iron pan full of oil, which I have a nickname for, I call it a cast iron pan full of oil. Let's go, shall we? Okay, now we're gonna cook this in some oil, but we're not gonna get, we don't wanna get them too cooked. We don't wanna get them too brown. So I'm gonna do it in batches. I'm putting the peppers in first, some of the peppers. Because if you put the onions in at the same time, can you see me? Yeah. You can't, can you see me now? Yeah. Okay, 
you don't want to put the onions and peppers in together because I don't want them real brown. I'm not like caramelizing them. I'm not getting like a mallard duck effect, you know? I want to have them soften a little bit, maybe a little translucent, the onions, not translucent peppers. But so I'm gonna cook the peppers first in, in like two or three batches, whatever it takes. Then I'll do the onions, two, three batches, whatever it takes. Um, but not, like I said, not getting the onions too overcooked. I just wanna soften everything up so it's nice to the tooth, you know what I mean? Okay. And finishing up the last batch of onions. And then we will be uh, moving on to the sausage. And you don't want the heat too heaty, right? Because if it's too heaty, it's going to brown too fast. You don't want to brown this. You want to keep it, you know, translucent. I said that. So watch the heat. I'm going to lay the sausages in here. In the same oil, I want all the flavors to mingle. And I've been adding a little bit of oil here and there as necessary. So this is what the veggies look like. There's a little more browning on the onions, I think, than I would have liked, but I'm okay with it. I'll live with it. No one's gonna see it. It's gonna be in the crust. Um, yeah. No, film me. I said film me. That's better. So I'm not cooking the sausage all the way through. I just want to brown it nicely on all the sides because it's going to bake in the oven anyway. But it wouldn't brown, you know. So I'm browning it, getting it like halfway cooked. And I'm not even taking the temperature. Not even taking the temperature. You can have a fever. I don't care because I'm going to cook it through in the oven for plenty of time now that it's got a good sear and a good start. So, um... Let's go take a look at the dough, shall we? Some uh, flour in the peel. What? What peel? Oh, this um, wooden handled cutting board looking thing that you see people make pizza with that you don't know what it is because you didn't grow up in Bruno's like I did. It's called a peel. Unless you watch Alton Brown and he calls his Emma Peel. And if you know what that means, you're old. Now, uh, Zip Ahead Pizza Man's mother had an allergy to flour, oddly enough, working, living in a pizzeria. I mean, she didn't live in a pizzeria, but she was there 9 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. So she wore gloves. She wore surgical gloves. She used to get surgical gloves. Six fifty dollars um, plus tax, it was seven hundred two dollars for a box of surgical gloves. non sterile just latex gloves. Okay, assembly time. I got some dough. I'm not a dough master, so I'm not, I'm not, not feeling 100% of my dough. I'm going to cut the sausages in half. Yeah, it's almost completely cooked. It's a little pink inside, but that'll, that'll, that'll be gone in the oven. Put it down flat like that. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put some onions across the whole thing and some peppers. Just lay it across there. Oh my god! If you could smell how bad I smell, I mean, if you could smell the food that I'm smelling, then you would smell what I'm smelling. Um, I've been told by Peg I should put some herbs on it, so I'm doing a a little oregano. I'm gonna have to track whose is whose because me and Peg is getting oregano and basil and red pepper. I don't know if uh, CK wants red pepper or not. Oh, CK's behind the camera. She's telling me she wants red pepper. So I don't have to track that. The only one that won't get it will be Vincenzo because red pepper is a vegetable. I'm gonna cheese it up. Now I was told by little Leo, um, he said, don't be stingy with the cheese. That's what he told me. Don't be stingy with the cheese. Uh, so I'm not being stingy. I'm putting a good amount of cheese in here. 
put another one. Now I'm going to try to roll this thing up in a sort of way. Again, dough is not my fort. Yeah, I said fort, F-O-R-T-E, fort. Forte would be Italian, but it would mean uh, a musical term. If you're saying it's what you're good at, it's your fort. Learn how to pronounce the words. Shove this stuff in, it's getting out. Now, I never made an Italian knish. I'll tell you, I, can, you know, I didn't do this. I made pizzas, in the, but I didn't make Italian knish, so I'm just doing the best I can here. I'm going to pinch them up. And what I'm going to do is, it's going to go in the hot oil in the pan. I'm going to see how many I can fit in at the same time. And, uh, and I, got, I got another ingredient. I'm going to do an egg wash on top of it. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you like you've never bitten me before. I'm going to beat you. So hey, don't. I'm beating some eggs. I'm beating some eggs with a little bit of water to do what we call an egg wash. An egg wash is when you want to raise money, you people bring their eggs to you. That's a car wash. I'm confused. I admit it. I'm a little confused. It's late. I've been smelling sausage and onions and peppers. I'm starving. Um, the egg wash is going to help this um, brown up a little bit. So on the peel, we got Vincenzo's. I don't know if you can see that over there. Um, his has no vegetables because he will explode if he tastes a vegetable. And then the rest of us, Garaz, they're all interchangeable. So the egg wash is just going to make it lustrous and pretty. One egg, how about a teaspoon of water, more or less? I didn't measure. And then what I'm going to do is, right now I've got the, uh, the cast iron pan is back on the burner, getting hot. With the same oil that I cooked all the vegetables and then the sausage in, right? So it's going to have flavor, and that flavor is going to hit the bottom. So the top gets an egg wash, the bottom gets, oh my God, the bottom gets oil with sausage and peppers and onion juice in it, you know? So because it's going to sit in the hot oil that's been on the hot burner, it's going to stimulate the bottom of a pizza oven. Because I can't do a pizza oven. I don't got a pizza oven. But we're going to stimulate it by um, having a semelarcon, as they call it, of um, the, the pan. Let me get the pan. The pan is hot. You got to wear a mitt. Like Johnny Bench over here with a mitt. So I'm going to make... Um, See, I see many I can fit in at a time. If I can fit all of them in, I will. I just don't know if I can. I can't. I think I could just do two at a time. So I'm going to do two adult ones. I mean, uh, veggies. You can hear it sizzling already. Now I'm going to put it in the oven at uh, 475. Get nice and hot, the oven. Um, I don't want to burn the crust too fast, but I want to cook it good, you know? What I'm thinking is, it's going to take between 10 and 20 minutes. Probably around 15, because that would be like the average. But I don't want to be mean, so I'm not going to assume that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to start checking it around 10. I mean, I'm starving. I'm going to be checking it before then. But officially, I'm going to start checking it at 10 minutes, expecting it'll take five more minutes. And then I'll cook the other two, and it'll be delightful. And we'll, we'll, we'll do a tasting. And then, um, you know, we'll order Chinese if this didn't work. All right, uh, batch two of uh, my improvised, I say improvised, but I've been thinking about this for weeks. Uh, my mod modified, maybe is the word, Italian Kanish. First of all, I made a little uh, dough ball. I cooked it uh, with everything bagel on it. Made a little little snack, like a, like a garlic knot. It's an everything but the bagel knot knot. Okay. Stuff together when they get this out of here. Yeah, these grew. These grew in the oven like you wouldn't believe they grew. And this is Vincenzo's because there's no vegetables hanging out the side. Now these look amazing. Can you see how amazing these look? These look amazing. I'm gonna and I'm gonna try to cut into one and uh, do a taste test for you. See how it comes out because looks amazing but does it taste amazing I 
need a bigger pizza cutter. I used to have like the big one used for Sicilian, but it broke. So there it is. Sausage, peppers, onions, cheese. Mmm. That is amazing. Oh yeah. Does it match what's in my memory? I don't know. Honestly, I'm so old, I don't know. But is it amazing? Oh God, it's amazing. Am I gonna make this again? Oh yeah, I'm gonna make this again. Am I gonna share this with my family? Not sure. Am I getting flipped off by my daughter? Yes. So I guess I'm gonna share this with the family. Listen. From CK's Kitchen to your kitchen or wherever you're watching this, stay positive, test negative. We're almost through this thing. Just a couple more months and everything will be back to normal. Till then, cook something yourself, but also get some takeout. Keep the restaurant business going.